So we have talked a couple times of which killers should, or in the Creeper's case, shouldn't be incorporated into the Entity's realm, and each time we have briefly mentioned the idea of bringing along survivors for these dangerous beings to chase down and hunt. Well, I wanted to take a different route and also spin off and discuss regular average Joes who have come face to face with death numerous times and come out alive, some way or somehow. And this time, since the likes of William Bill Overbeck have made their way in, why not have another hardcore video game zombie survivalist rise up and step into the darkness. Today we're looking at the not so photogenic, the distant white cousin to Kanye genius. West. I know you get eaten, but first let me take a selfie. He's covered wars, you know, man himself. Today we are saying why Frank West should be a survivor in Dead by Daylight. Never did like that damn show. It's Frank. Frank West. Remember that name, because the whole world's gonna know it in three days. I'm a reporter, Vic! That's what I do! I report! I've covered wars, you know. The world needs Frank West. Heading out west, keep in mind we do look at the story and reason why these people should be considered for a Dead by Daylight survivor role. So don't comment at me saying, oh, I didn't realize this was a Dead by Daylight video until five minutes in. With that being said, being the main protagonist of two games and one non-canon game, this freelance photojournalist will do anything and everything to get just the right picture and uncover what secrets and stories the world before him has to offer, even if it puts himself in harm's way. The story of Frank West truly began with the Willamette outbreak that consumed a small town and centralized its still living populace in the town mall amidst a flood of reanimated corpses, where Frank West flew in by helicopter and jumped in via the rooftop to see exactly what was going on with the quarantine city despite military conjecture. It is within the mall where he engages with his first of many zombie experiences, and more importantly, the ramifications of the general public and how insane they can become. Taking on the conspiracy behind the horrific virus, West discovered it was all a sabotage attempt by one Carlito Keys, whose hometown was ravaged by the same disease due to the U.S. government trying to harness the Ampulex Compressa Gigantis, a wasp specimen that would hijack a host's body and saw the insect had an accelerated birth process the scientist had hoped would help the country's high demands for beef production. After one of the queen wasps escaped containment and started the Santa Cabeza outbreak, things went south. The military wiped out the city and its populace, and Carlito swore revenge by sicking the same virus on the hungry American public. Frank, during his time within the Willamette Mall, was able to thwart Carlito's plans, take down numerous psychopaths, and come to the aid and rescue of numerous survivors. When he learned that special forces were being deployed to wipe out all survivors, all while being infected by a wasp larva, with the help of Carlito's sister Isabella, they concoct a temporary vaccine scene and were able to take down the leader of the special forces in order to escape and reveal the cold, hard truth behind the outbreak, that the U.S. government made zombies. Despite the U.S. government only taking partial blame for what happened, Frank West became a celebrity for his accolades and living to tell the tale, starring in his own TV show for a few seasons called Uncovered, before eventually being cancelled for a few seasons later, meeting up with Rebecca Chang, the two sought to find out more information on increasing government cover-ups leading them to Las Vegas during its widespread quarantining and eventually moving to Fortune City, where yet another zombie outbreak was unleashed, only this time to save and team up with a partner of equal capabilities and zombie dispatch, Chuck Green. They both infiltrate the Phenotrans facility where Chuck Green had been framed for the Fortune City attacks, only to further discover that a cure for the virus was made, but kept away from the public. Maria Mayon, the director of Phenotrans, sets the lab to self-destruct in order to destroy destroy the cure and kill them both, only for the both of them to escape. Although Frank could have really used that cure considering he was taking a daily dose vaccine of Zombrex to prevent himself from becoming a zombie, but justified it saying that at least they had enough proof to clear Chuck's name. Man, you are a good guy Frank. Can we change his name to good guy Frank? Museums were rectified to display the history of the zombie outbreaks to the public, and of course Frank West's image and story was on full display. With him now considered a zombie consultant and a 
public speaker as he transitioned into becoming a college professor focusing on investigative journalism. Soon enough, his life is coming full circle. He gets a protege named Vic, and Vic wished to get the scoop on a military compound near Willamette. Discovering zombie military research is yet again being conducted by the U.S. government group Obscurus, yet this time they are found out. And Obscurus finds him and labels him a terrorist. He escapes, but he is looking to clear his name. So Frank partners with a ZDC agent named Brad Park and enters yet another outbreak at Willamette, but this time during Black Friday. So it's not much different than a Black Friday cell. It was through this skew of events that Frank eventually sacrifices himself to save the lives of his friends and student. Being eaten alive by Evo zombies, Frank had finally become the thing he had escaped and fought for years, but a much more fearsome zombie nonetheless. He was captured and given his humanity back eventually by Blackburn with an administered cure in Barnaby's lab. He escapes the firebombing of Willamette and ultimately lives to becoming a best-selling author that exposed the government again. Jesus, the government in this universe sure gets away with a lot. It's kind of like our government, isn't it? But hey, at least Frank gets to live it up and say what it was like being dead and back. At least he's making some money off a book now. Starting off as a photojournalist who has covered wars, you know, he isn't necessarily hiding behind the lens cap, and the man behind the photography is actually a skilled wrestler and can handle himself in a gunfight, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and even can cross the swords. Facing and decimating populations of zombies, numerous psychopaths, and the U.S. government time and time again, and becoming a full-fledged zombie and coming out alive is an achievement on its own. All things considered, I think Frank West deserves the proud title of a survivor. Hell, he was a world-renowned survivor, hero, and icon in the universe he hails from. So sadly enough, the entity would find it quite amusing to rip Mr. West away from his life of tormented luxury and place him in its realm, since a majority of the entity's killers are undefeatable psychopaths anyways. Even though his age has slowly caught up with them, it has never hindered his abilities to fight to stay alive, and more importantly, work together with others in order to make that all possible. Now, of course, when it comes to including a new character, there has to be three perks that come along for the ride, and with his time as a photojournalist and a zombie, I've got a few in mind. Even though the comment section is likely to label these as absolute trash, despite perks like Pharmacy and Left Behind existing. Now, the first perk, Photo Photogenic. Photogenic guarantees a flashlight or sport flashlight on your first completed chest search. Not only that, but blinding the killer with a flashlight or fireworks will cause their aura to be revealed to all survivors for 5, 10, and 15 seconds. Perk number two, Uncovered. While the killer's aura is revealed, any survivors within a 32 meter radius of you will have an increase in the repair speed by 15, 20, and 25% during that duration of their aura being revealed. This increase in repair speed can be stacked with other items and perks. And the last perk that is an idea that came from Demiria Dimensions, thank you for that, my good old fan there, this perk called Back From The Dead. Once per trial, if the survivor were to be afflicted with the exposed status effect, they will instead be afflicted by the oblivious status effect for however long the first exposed effect were to last. This works with the killer's abilities, add-ons, and hex no one escapes death. So it would be a great counter to Noed since so many people complain about killing killers running no ed, but this would only be able to be used once if exposed were to be triggered. Now on top of all that we have to talk about skins too. His base skin will of course be based on his attire from Dead Rising 1, being the slick haired, white shirt, black top wearing gentleman with a camera draped down from his neck. DLC skins could include his look from Dead Rising 4, where he has a more aged appearance, a green jacket and brown backpack, and as a bit of fun, and if Capcom were even to allow Frank West to be used at all, maybe even have a legendary skin for a Halloween event where Frank would adorn the famous Mega Man outfit complete with arm blaster and helmet, although I don't think the arm blaster would be usable in the entity's realm, or maybe even having the surfbot mascot head as a solo headpiece for Frank to wear, 
as it is a pretty iconic image for the franchise and its character customization in general. I know it's a far-fetched thing, but maybe if they were to include a map as well, they would definitely have to include the Willamette Mall, the most famous environment from the Dead Rising franchise. Having the mall as a two-story level with a few stores included would be a treat to play in. Having numerous ideas for stores to include, like toy stores or sports stores or grocery stores, anything that could be included, and then in the halls between these stores, you could have kiosks that you could loop or other mall vendors, and the exit gates being the entrances to the mall themselves. Now that about covers our first survivor in the Who Should Be in Dead by Daylight series. Next time, we're taking on a pyramid scheme for the next killer. Which survivor in horror movies and games do you think deserves to be eternally tortured by the entity? You sick bastards. Let me know in the comments, and if you're feeling frank, like, share, sub, and all that jazz. Donate to my Patreon or during my live streams to be one of the many infected listed here. Next up, we will be jumping into the Half-Life universe for a Why You Wouldn't Survive scenario, so stay tuned for that and check out some of my other content if you're not too busy. Until next time, I'm Zach S, aka Wild Such Gaming. Never forget to stay wild. Alright, I got the spirit chasing after me. I just need to go upstairs, jump out the window, and I can buy my teammates some time. Alright. Yep. What? What? Fix your game!